Bo? Yeah. Not even a tiny bit. <laughs> There was nothing. There were reports of, uh, and you know, this was a total hoax. They had these little tar balls. Yes, I remember that. I remember that. And they showed uh, people were using their potato camera. Yeah, from back in. Yeah, their flip phone potato (laughs) camera. And they were videotaping these tar balls that were washing up on the beach. But it was a total hoax because when I got there, no matter how far along the beach I walked, there was no sign of anything. Well, it turns out. That not only is the amount of oil that was being dumped into the ocean floor in the Gulf of Mexico a a tiny speck compared to the volume of total water in the Gulf of Mexico. Not only that, but, you know, a lot of people don't know this, but crude oil is organic. What? Yes. Do you mean... You mean you could eat crude oil? Well, I wouldn't recommend eating it, just well, like I wouldn't recommend I, I buy, eating a tree frog. I buy from all the Amazon, my... the Amazon tree frog. You don't oh, eat those. You get high. No, you die instantly. Oh, they said a I, speck of the the goop on their back will kill you. But that's within all, a minute. That's all I eat is organic food at the grocery store. Dart frog or frog darts or dog uh, dart frogs. What? Oh, they use those on uh, Ace Ventura, um, yes. Pet Detective, when Nature Calls, when he goes to the. Uh, yeah, but uh, I don't Africa. know what happened to him in 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 that movie. But I'll tell you right now, what they wipe the end of the spear on the backs of these frogs. And so when it hits you, you die. Okay. It gets in your bloodstream and you're dead. So anyway, I wouldn't recommend stirring this into your coffee. I'm talking about the crude oil. But it is organic, and it's actually made out of decomposing life from thousands of years ago. So it goes back to Mother Nature. Right. Okay, so these uh, chitlins... Oh, I didn't... I, oh. I, I, my point was... I didn't, I, I didn't want to... You know, I hate it when we... We get off on a tangent, and then the point's never made. Oh, right, right. So the point is, is that this oil was being eaten by bacteria in the Gulf of Mexico. Right. That's why when they searched for it, because they wouldn't do a cleanup, they sent out a massive army of people to do this multi-quadrillion dollar cleanup that was going to take the rest of the time that Earth has before it's burned up by the sun exploding. Correct. Correct. They couldn't find oil (laughs) anywhere. So not only was there not oil on the beach, but when the crew went out looking for oil, they couldn't find it anywhere. Wow. The bacteria in the Gulf of Mexico ate all the oil. Yeah, and the left does not want to possibly. I'd love to interview one of the left and say, hey, hey. Where's all that oil? How do you feel about that? Like, what were their... Anyways, I don't have time. Right, to, so I just wanted to. Okay. That was our explanation of the uh, oil spill. Okay, BP so, oil spill. So what does BP oil spill have to do with the shooter in Orlando? I don't know. We got off on a tangent. <laughs> well, these kids were doing a documentary about the BP oil spill, okay, and right. this is what. And they're like, "Hey, look at the part of our documentary. Look at this." And with undercover cameras to see if she could pry more information from BP's night crew. Morning. Morning. Do you have a badge? No, I'm actually just wondering what's going on here. She pulls up in the middle of the night with a hidden camera in her car. She rolls down her window and talks to a security guard with a gun. Okay. And where she went, the security guard was securing what? Uh, BP and the oil spill, that whole area. Oh, we're back in 2010. Yeah. Okay. I was wondering if this was old. Security guard? Okay. The shooter in Orlando. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Oh, it's up. for BP, like the oil spill. Is there any way that I could talk to any of the people that are out there working? Like, uh, there's people out here, but they're all scattered all over the place. There's no one really to talk to, like any like supervisor. No one gives a sh- no one gives a shit here. Like everybody just get out to get paid. They're like hoping for more oil to come out and more people to complain so they'll have the jobs. Because once people get laid off here, it's gonna suck for them. They want more disaster to happen because that's where their money making is. Yeah. All about the money, right? All about the money. Exactly. The security guard said that to her? And it was... The shooter in Orlando. The Orlando shooter. I am not so six lying. years ago, he would have been 23 years old. Right, and I saw him. I like, mean, you, that's I, why every word out of his mouth was like. Like, like people are like making money. Yeah, grow up, dude. <laughs> oh. So that was him, and that was his attitude 
back in 2010. Sounds like somebody, like a conspiracy theorist. Oh, he does. Oh, I mean, he started going off on ranting about the government, or the, not the government, but the, the company. BP wants more oil spills and more more, more BP, chaos. BP was Because they struggling. make money. They oh. were struggling. I remember that local, by the way, a lot of people didn't know this at the time and probably still don't know now, but when you go to a BP gas station, those gas stations are independently owned. They're not owned by BP. It's a franchise. Which is short for British Petroleum. Okay, so who is also owned the by the owners? Uh, who's owned by? Was owned by the um, nah, Venez- Venezuela. Venezuelan. That's uh, that's that's the other one. You're thinking of the um, Exxon? No, not Exxon. Uh, it starts with a C. Whatever it is. No, BP uh, is not Venezuela. Um, no, British Petroleum. Right. Yeah. It's not Venezuelan. But anyway, so <laughs> the in- individuals that owned. BP gas stations had to put up signs in front of their door that said, hey, we ain't got nothing to do with the BP oil spill. Please stop boycotting us. Right. <laughs> they were really hurting. And these are just individual franchisees. But anyway. Correct. So the the killer was a, a, an armed security guard. Man, this, this lady's lucky she's alive. Because that was a jihadist. Uh, yes. <laughs> and he, he didn't become radicalized. This is the same guy that was cheering 9-11 how many years earlier? He was 23 right. during that video. So that would have been 17, 16 as a sophomore, 16. So four, Correct. Seven years earlier, he was cheering on 9-11. Correct. And so, you know, what do you make of that? Or actually, it was more like nine years ago. It was 2001, 2010. It's probably nine years earlier. Right. Okay. At least eight, but either way. Right. So, so what, all I'm saying is that this guy was like an an up and comer. Even his ex wife came out and said I had to leave him because of the violence, and he just kept beating me up, and I didn't want to be beat he up. He was anymore. a violent guy. Yeah, he was a violent guy. And then she started going on and on about his possible homosexual tendencies. Oh, this was a huge. Um, this was a, a a great thing for the left. They this was um, this was like a get out of jail free card for them to find out that this guy was gay. Now you might think initially, oh, so gay people can be violent too. But no, 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 no. You understand that uh, there's this narrative amongst the LGBT community uh, that happened to be liberal, which is a vast majority of them. There's not very many. Um, conservative lgbt well, people well when you see one come out like uh uh nero what's oh the, uh, milo milo yeah mm-hmm. his handle nero on, is this yeah his handle on on twitter nero uh he's an a well outspoken conservative and he you know he calls this uh the the uh, dangerously fag tour or something or other right but yeah he's outspoken about conservatism and tells that everybody they need to get behind daddy yeah, he calls Trump, <laughs> Trump daddy, daddy. <laughs> which I think is uh, hilarious. But, um, no, he's got that paternal, you know, patriarchal type of aura about him. So he's got, he's got, he's got. I'm the, not calling him daddy, but he's got daddy issues. Milo, possibly. Anyways, <laughs> so, so, that, but he's a cool guy though. He, and oh, he's very, I love, yes, yeah, yeah. no, he's, I love. He's him. great, and but. You know, you got your Bruce Jenner's who claims to be Republican, and of course, he got a lot of hate for that. So the vast majority of people in the LGBT community happen to be Democrats, pulling the handle for them, liberal, whatever. And um, so the narrative with them for a long time, for since the beginning of time, is that the ones that hate gays the most are closet homosexual conservatives. Right. So you got your out. Uh, you're you're out of the closet gays who are just liberal Democrats, and if you have any haters out there, um, uh, anti or homophobic, Ru- the, the ones that are the most it. homophobic are, and we're talking the kind of homophobes that are very outspoken in their opposition to lesbian, gays, bisexuals, all that kind of stuff. Really outspoken. Usually, uh, the narrative goes that they're 
extremely religious, particularly <laughs> Christian. <laughs> they have to be Christians. They're very, very religious, fundamentalist Christians. And the reason they're so homophobic and outwardly homophobic and anti-gay is because they themselves are gay. And because of their religion, they hate themselves. And they're projecting wow. that hatred onto the gays that are out of the closet. So when they found out – everybody understand? Everybody with me? Right. Yep. I'm with you. So when they found out that the shooter from Orlando was gay – this was perfect for them, right? I mean, do you do you disagree with anything that I said about the narrative of how the gays view Republicans that are so homophobic? Well, yeah. Which is that they're actually closeted gays themselves. Right, because they were probably hoping that this shooter being gay is the closeted homophobic Christian. Oh, this fits the narrative that they've the been yeah. pushing forever. <laughs> oh, they're just closeted homophobe. Uh, they're, see, this is the problem. It's not the problem isn't the pro Here's where they were going with it. The problem is not Islam or Muslims. The problem is you write wingers who are actually gay that are closet hom homosexuals that are acting out using your religion. Now, in this case... He's not a Christian, but the fact that he was so religious in um, Islam isn't so much about terrorism, but it's about right wing extremism. Exactly. And that's what they wanted to. They really wanted to push that narrative. And they did. They ha pushed that narrative. Hammered that hard. thing home. Yeah. So but it fell on its face because people they were getting just drowned out by the fact that. This guy's a Muslim terrorist. He's not just right. – it's its not that he happens to be Muslim and that because he's gay, his religion has caused him to kill a bunch of gay people because he hates gays and he hates himself. And that this – they're saying this was a murder-suicide. <sighs> and that the fact that he's Islamic was just – happenstance he could have been a christian and they're even coming out and saying christian fundamentals are uh, extremists are as dangerous okay but this debunks all of that because um during his shooting rampage he stopped and called 911 <laughs> now to... we're getting into facts dude you can't let facts get in the way of a good narrative <laughs> simple as that i love it <laughs> you, you just can't do that okay okay so <laughs> So okay, without my facts, as I uh, all right, well let, let's hear the about, facts. I'll I'll uh, yield my narrative to your facts. Go okay, ahead. Go how ahead. about a first-hand eyewitness? Okay, I'm telling you, man, I did my homework this week. Oh, I would love to hear your homework. Okay, you are being tested. There is, <laughs> and I apologize to this organization. Uh, it's nothing to do with you. It's and if I knew who you were, I would tell everybody. However. Uh, there was a news international news organization, and the the the, the news anchor has a, like a British voice or whatever. And he so gets, he's smart, right? Because that's the way Americans right. think. If they got a British accent, they're geniuses. The only people that I could find credible evidence on this shooting was international news. Wow that that explains so much. This week. Russia ahead, today. Ahead. Russia today was. First on the spot, I was all over Russia today because they had the facts. Wow, that's that's telling. So this other this this is the uh, this is the interview. Customers of the Pulse nightclub in Orlando have said they saw shooter Omar Mateen at the bar on multiple occasions. The gunman is also reported to have messaged several people on gay dating apps. Mateen's father has denied his son was gay, but one Pulse regular says the killer visited the venue to pick up men. I met him one time um, at the bar. He was talking to me about his ex-wife. He used to come in the bar about uh, on the weekend sometimes so he would be there. Uh, sometimes he would miss a couple of weeks and then be in again. Uh, he was he was regular. We consider that regular. That guy sounded like he was 90. He was trying to pick up people, men. He's a homosexual and he was trying to pick up men. Uh, he would walk up to them and then he would uh, maybe uh, put his arm around them or something and maybe try to get them to dance a little bit or something and then 
go over and buy a drink or something. That's what people do at gay bars. You know, that's what we do. Well, that, I mean, and that's that's what the media is running with with their.